Hello and welcome to Sobrix. I'm Adam and this is Sobrix. This is my channel for reviewing Lego sets and building them and other Lego related stuff. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Lego Legends of Chima Razkul's Glider set. This is set number 70000. It has 109 pieces, and I actually paid $13 for this. Uh, this sticker, I don't even know where this is from. Um, it says it was $14 or $13.99, now on brown clearance. I don't know what that means. The box is a little bit crushed here at some points but as far as i know this is sealed yeah it appears sealed and um i paid 13 dollars for this on a very popular online retail website where people can bid on uh things they're trying to buy um i think this one i got as a a, a you know buy it now or something but i'm not 100 percent sure and i didn't know how big it was going to be i just saw the the um you know the piece count roughly and i've looked at some other chima sets and want to look at some more so i was interested in this and so i decided to uh pick this up so in this video i'm going to open this up i'm going to put this together and then i'm going to share my thoughts on it so while i build i will speed the video up and then i'll slow it back down to review this set so until then enjoy okay so while we look at the build for this lego legends of chima raz calls glider set i just wanted to say thanks for watching and then remind you if you like the video click the thumbs up if you like my other videos click the subscribe button we start with the minifigure and their accessory and then we work on building this glider it starts with a, a chassis that is very much going to uh, resemble a bird body as we go i was very impressed with how the beak and the head were all done there's a little bit of like technic and different stuff underneath here for the bottom as well as the little feet there those also were a huge part of why I ended up loving this set then we can add all of the wings and the tail feathers as well and then I spend some time kind of looking at this adding the uh, mini figure to it and that's it so now on to my review for this set okay so that is this Lego Legends of Chima Rascals or Rascals glider set this is awesome this is really really cool this is a great small set i think this is a, a, a very well executed um well put together uh nicely designed little set kind of vehicle here that feels very much in line with the chima stuff part of the reason i was drawn to this one is well one because of the price uh two because it was similar to a um like the heiress's eagle set in some way uh it may be in opposition as far as tribes go but uh there it had some similar kind of aesthetic things that i wanted to check out and then um you know i, I realized kind of while building it and looking at it at the end that it has a feeling of me that is similar to some um modern sets i think there's actually two kind of raven or crow dreams sets that uh are bigger than this i think there's like a i don't know an 80 or 90 or 100 dollar one i think there's a big one with maybe a thousand pieces um and then i think there's a slightly smaller one too maybe in the 30 to 40 dollar range i'm not 100 percent on that but that's what i i think and this felt like it had some similarities with those as well um and then i i just always like looking at chima stuff and this was i think better than i expected especially only considering you know 109 pieces but uh there's a lot to look at so we'll get into it and the first thing we will look at is the minifigure because you do get one and they also come with an accessory but i'll talk more about that a little bit later so this is Razkul. now i don't know if i've had this character come in any sets they may have um, but it may be a figure i picked up kind of loose at a brick convention a while ago when i grabbed you know several different chima sets here so we have Razkul, maybe part of kind of the vultures or the hawk or the whatever tribe is is birds, but not like the eagles, like Eris and stuff like that, or Aquila. Uh, but this is really, really cool. So, of course, we have the head here, which is similar to like uh, Razor, I think. And uh, there's actually a list of them in the first instructions. 
are so we have like Rizzo, Razor, and Rosum and Rascal. Uh, and I believe I've looked at one with Rizzo and with Razor. I don't know if I have have one with Razum. I may. I don't know if there's more of them here. But we have Rascal over at the right side there. So this is really, really cool. So it's kind of the special molded head helmet type piece. Kind of has a feather design going around the back. The uh, beak comes out. And this beak is kind of uh, like printed with gold there there's a little bit of like dark bluish gray underneath it but there's that gold on top which is really really nice and then there's a little bit of printing on that as well that might be kind of hard to see there's also some printing kind of up on the side of the eyes here which is really really cool a little bit of asymmetry there with the mark on this side of the head so i really really like that if we take that off of course we have the weird looking chima head here here. So this is uh, Razkul's head without it. And it's very similar. Kind of have the wide eyes there and the beak printed on there. We do have an alternate face for this character with the eyes open much wider, a little more surprised. The beak kind of open a little bit there. And we can see how that looks with the uh, helmet or the mask on there. So that uh, makes the eyes much more pronounced in there which is cool these these eyes are you know they're wide set but they're pretty narrow so that's great and then they do have this kind of armor pauldron type piece there which i will show this is pretty standard a lot of chima characters come with something like this it's just in the pearl kind of gray pearl silver there it does have the uh, blue translucent tile on the front on the back we add a couple of one by ones with the clip and then these nice black wings there which is really cool this just goes over the minifigure like neck between the torso and the head and then looking at the torso we get this super detailed really kind of uh interesting torso there it's almost like they have armor but it's like made out of a bunch of like straps or like lines going in all different directions here so you can see the one up in the corner a couple coming across this way this way it looks like it's almost like torn up or just like thrown together a little bit haphazardly some of the straps go towards the kind of medallion thing in the middle which is maybe their chi power or whatever but we also get like a little bit of gold up top which is nice overall a pretty detailed torso we also have printing on the midsection, which is really detailed, as well as that gold little accent in the middle. And then printing on the legs, kind of up at the top, down in the middle, down to the feet. There's a little asymmetry there as well with kind of the color for the feathers maybe over here versus over here, as well as another little accessory down there. Nothing on the arms, like the color for the hands or the gloves. Back of the torso has that same kind of black. And I don't know if that's purple or blue, but we get some of that and the back of their sort of vest or their harness or whatever is back there with some nice little pouches that are accented nicely so really cool to get that figure and, and like I said this does have an accessory but I'll talk about that in a little bit and then besides the minifigure you get their glider I think you know it's interesting to call this a glider it, I think it could also you know just be a flyer or um, something of that nature but uh, it works as well and it, it's very bird-like which is excellent so we start off building this with kind of this front like hull type piece four wide tapers down to two wide it's kind of hollowed out there's a few um, plates done in there a couple angled plates behind that and then that's sort of the uh, groundwork that we lay to then build upon it um, pretty early on we add some of the stuff up at near the front got these nice vented slope pieces on the side so a little bit of bracket use there um, love the color for these cheese wedge all of this color i feel like i don't see this color as much and so whatever color that is please let me know in the comments below uh, i don't know if i see that very often um, nice slope back here really interesting 
noticing that these tiles are printed. I don't know um, what they're supposed to be. I have them going the same direction. So let me pop that off and flip it around. To me, it almost looks like like teeth or um, something, but I, I, you know, that doesn't necessarily feel like it fits to me with sort of a bird person or a bird type character. Um, but either way, those are, uh, or maybe there are they wings? Are they um, just a blade? I, I don't know what those would be but those are are printed and so you get two of those which is really interesting use some jumper plates go to the back add on kind of one of these like uh, I don't know what these are called it's a modified plate with a, you know a one by two with the bar elements kind of flayed out I think it's been used as like mech hands in the past uh, and then we have a like finish up the detail here of course we have the area where a character could sit I love how the front of this was done so we kind of have like a beak here we have a bone here which is maybe like the controls for this there's a couple spots of like translucent uh, red studs throughout so you can see some right under there there's some kind of right in here as well as various other places there that get kind of covered up and then I really liked this piece which I thought was like something that I recognized from a Bionicle set or something it feels and, and looks like um, pieces that I don't see much anymore either so it's kind of like this slope it's a two by two um, I don't know if it's a yeah it might be a full brick at the end of it um, or you know something akin to that uh, but it's got this kind of interesting looking shape here with just the kind of like stud cylinders at the back or the anti-stud the back here looks a little bit odd it's sloped down it's kind of also tapered and then it has these molds in it with the little like circles little dots in there as well as the little cut out and that's on either side and that actually works really really well here there's sort of just like a subtle you know implication of eyes right there and I feel really appropriate for the shape of the front end of this like and it it feels like it goes towards the beak in a really really nice way and it's not like it doesn't stand out super well it's actually a little bit hard to capture on camera but that little extra texture in there and that little extra kind of cut out really feels to me like a great uh, piece choice and really accentuates kind of the bird like aspect of the front of this then we add on the bottom so there's a little bit of technic stuff we add kind of some things to the bottom of this which is where we attach the feet so we just have some talons going forward a couple talons going rearward I don't know if I have these mixed up a little bit but I think they're fine um, these just use the barbs as well as kind of the those sort of mech finger type pieces there uh, and they that clip on again love the color for this technic piece that's like the uh, axle bushing piece with the bar pieces coming off of it and then we have a couple technic bricks in there with the two pins and we attach on here we add some other stuff on there to uh, you know attach that down so just that and these are actually like really stable you can also move these a a pretty good amount but the way they did these clips back in the day they're like very tight on there so I wouldn't be too worried like you could have it pretty much propped up on just on the barbs and be fine and I wouldn't worry about it like um, you know flaying out or anything depending on how you do it uh, but you can also just make it so it's it's like flatter there which looks really good as well I, I won't uh, deny that but I, I like that there's some option there we also built in some like functionality in here which is really cool so there's a Technic axle with the kind of flat end on the side there as well as the translucent cone piece. And on the other side, we have this little bit that's attached with this chain. So what you can do, and this is out of the back, we can push this forward 
and it releases this sort of pin which is kind of made with one of those pieces that's like a technic pin with the stud on top and a bar on the bottom sometimes they're used for like flick projectiles um, but we attach it with a chain that leads up to here and so that just slots in there really easily and um, uh, you know stays connected which I think is a really interesting choice I, I you know it's interesting that it stays connected uh, by looking at the pictures here it says we can kind of attach this crystal now this crystal uh, well I have a stud on the bottom of it but that's okay uh, so this crystal is are used as game pieces for the like speed ores game and stuff like that but um, there's one in this set as well and this seems to show that that can be put on this sort of bolt at the back and you know when you deploy that then it's almost like it's like a like a swinging mace or something to like bludgeon uh something or to like a wrecking ball or or anything else it's it's kind of this interesting little thing there that i think like flying with it could be uh really really cool and sort of make sense that it's attached otherwise i you know i think you could detach the chain and just f launch it out of there like a typical sort of um lego sort of uh projectile here it's uh, to me a little bit strange that it comes out the back it almost like looks like this bird is um like you know um relieving itself but uh i I can't tell if that's you know intended or not but uh, I just thought that was a little bit unique there so you can store it on the end you can put it down here and then if this were to come off with the red stud underneath you could simply take the red translucent stud from the bolt off the top and you know swap those so that that always um, works there and you can always have one extra red stud up on the side so that attaches with the this like modified plate with the bar that goes up put that on there uh, and then once we kind of have a lot of that stuff done we add on the wings or the gliding sort of stuff here so again they use kind of these mech figure pieces here these are on the modified plate with the um, bar that comes out and goes down so it kind of would like hang over they're uh, a little bit of an interesting piece you don't see them a ton it's kind of the inverse of this but these are one by four instead of one by two and instead of like coming out and going up they come out a little bit and go down and those kind of connect right up to where these angled plates are which is nice and then just with those like mech fingers there and these wing pieces we can get those on there and we can sort of flay them out a little bit i thought it was interesting there's not a ton of room on those bars that come down just because of the curve and how they are, are done there and then because of that how closely you place these once they're in there you can't actually like pass these past each other um, so these kind of mech finger pieces get in the way of each other so once it's set you know the rear wings from these kind of main uh, center uh, four there the ones on the right and left there they can't the the top ones can't come forward or if you do it the other way like they, they can't pass each other and they can't all go like super far back you can get it you know somewhere around there if we go as far forward as we can we get to about there and that's about what we can do with those which isn't too bad overall I really like the look of it when it's just kind of uh, my you know how i had it when i was done building it i, I think that's a, a really good look but being able to move them a little bit is something that uh, could be beneficial and then we add a little bit on to the back as well so we have a really nice color for the wing piece again this same kind of purple or blue or whatever that is uh there with the same kind of uh clip so that can be kind of angled down a little more it could be angled up a little more it could go like way down and I actually think it really looks good because this almost has 
a sort of um, rake to it and you could accentuate that even more by just moving a couple of the talons so that it's like really angled down if this is flat like this um, the these kind of positions here these points on the talons are uh, kind of a little bit down and so that makes the angle of the whole body lean forward in a really really nice way so i think that's a, a great look for this and then you can kind of accentuate that even more by using the tail at different angles and then we have these other kind of like little side uh feathers here tail feathers again in a wonderful color uh and those are attached just with black droid arms here so that's really good and then that's also where um uh Rascal's accessory comes from so uh, over here I didn't really point this out there is a modified plate with the two clips there instead of the modified plate with the vertical bar and uh, it has attached to it right now a little sub assembly that takes a like droid um, body uh, like that and then uh, we add on the one by one with the kind of double stud uh, there or the bar hole through there we put a red um, stud on that so what can be done is these little kind of feathers or wings or potentially blades can be affixed to that and we kind of get this neat little sort of double-sided blade here that's really really cool as a as an accessory for the character that is what they're shown with in the kind of list of the characters i uh showed earlier so we can see that there which is a, a neat little um thing it almost looks like a claw or like a, a pincer thing it also um almost has a beak like quality to it the way this comes together or you know uh yeah claw or talon like uh quality and then we can have the uh figure grab hold of the kind of bar from the drawer body there and that can be sort of their accessory um, one of the things I love about sets is when they have places to store accessories uh, and the like and so we do have that one bolt that stays attached with the chain we also have this accessory which can be stored over here I believe um, with those pieces on and it doesn't look that bad there's some asymmetry which is kind of cool and so like this side is always pretty much going to have the chain and so to have this over here when they're flying is not a big deal but it's also really cool to pretty easily add those to the mech arms here which then kind of give it even more of that sort of bird like um look to it so I, I like that there's options there always appreciate when you can find a spot to store a minifigure accessory and then yeah we have a spot for the figure to fit in here which is about right there and they fit in there well they can have their wings and their shoulder pad or shoulder armor pieces on there no problem and I think that looks lovely it looks like they're flying this glider controlling this glider or this flying machine this bird um, this mechanical bird sort of uh, by using the bone there it also feels very uh, kind of gritty sort of like Mad Max but um, post-apocalyptic but like you know potentially this vulture tribe if that's what they are they might be like scavengers or different things and i think a bone is like very fitting and very funny it's also a nice pop of white in there that helps like it, it stick out a little bit and then i just think this looks terrific i think it looks terrific with the figure in there i think it looks terrific without the figure i'm really impressed by how convincingly bird like this is uh and then you know the limited kind of articulation for the wings or whatever isn't really a concern to me and you know the wings also don't flap up and down necessarily but this is like super swooshable and if it's a glider not a big deal if it's a flyer like I I can imagine that any I, you know doing any kind of thing and and I think it kind of accomplishes that all uh, pretty nicely so 
I I think this is great. I'm pretty impressed with this. I'm surprised, you know, 109 pieces. Uh, I'm assuming more than nine of them are in the minifigure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe. So then the whole bird vehicle here, this whole glider, is probably 100 pieces or 99 pieces or, or somewhere in that range. And it's not small you know it, it's it's got some um, size to it uh, just because of the width you know it's just the wings essentially out here on the side and, and same at the back but the visual weight of it is considerable um, considering how few pieces that are in this and then I, I just really like that you can kind of have it you know uh, down a little like resting sort of flat or have it propped up in some way or like you could also lean it upwards like it's getting ready to take off or you know fly off of or jump off of some high ground to glide down and I think that's really really cool so even just like subtle movements and changes in how these talons or how these feet here are positioned you can really change the look of this in a way that uh I appreciate it's it's like this angle forward or the reverse angled upward or flat are all like pretty distinct and I think all appropriate ways to store this or play with this at various points so that's a huge success to me in terms of like colors being weird you know we see Technic pins here or anything I think they did a really good job you know most of this is brown black gray and then the purple or blue there and there's nothing really that bothers me here so even seeing like these technic pins or a little bit of technic stuff doesn't bother me um and for the most part it all feels really good color blocking is nice nice to get a couple prints good quality minifigure with printing all the way through they have an accessory that is unique and uh, that's kind of everything in this set i i really enjoyed this maybe more than i thought i would i'll show the extra pieces because you do get some you get that kind of half technic pin with the stud here's just a uh, black tile a round translucent tile the round translucent red plate the cheese wedge here one of the small barbs in white droid arm and an extra of the bone piece there and yeah like i said this set is 109 pieces and i paid 13 dollars for it so i don't know what the retail price was for this um back in you know whatever year maybe 2015 or 2016 something like that and uh, it may have been you know $14 or something but let me check I also thought it was really interesting that this was Lego set 70,000 that seems like a um, you know a, just kind of a weird thing so 2013 there 2013 we have um, and you know for just the bird actually buying it used without the minifigure or the box or the instructions uh, is relatively cheap uh, to look and get it in the um, complete range here is sealed yeah I, I mean on the on a major like uh, Lego website where people can buy and sell things i think the cheapest one in the u.s is 14 the cheapest one in canada is 13.98 a strip oh no there's one is sealed brand new in canada for you know 15 canadian which is just over 11 dollars us so i potentially could have got a, a better price but with shipping especially if i got it shipped from canada or whatever it would have been a little uh, more expensive i think 13 is pretty fair i'm not sure if i know what the um retail price was when it released let's see here seems like it was twelve dollars in the u.s in 2013 so now over 10 years later i paid basically retail and um you know with if you 
take into account uh, inflation and whatever other changes have happened since 2013, that doesn't feel that bad. That feels really, really great, actually. I would love to see other sets like this in the 10 to $15 range. This feels really, really cool to me. Um, so I was a big fan of this. I like it way more than I thought I would. I was kind of like, yeah, Chima stuff's cool, but what is this going to look like? I felt like when I looked at the box and looked at the picture, I was like, okay, that's vaguely bird-like, but I think the wings and stuff are doing a lot of the heavy lifting, but having it in front of me, like this head I, I, and the beak, I really, really can't get over. Uh, and then I had so much joy in finding out the possibilities of the feet there. So this is really, really cool. And this is purple, it says, uh, which is great. I'm glad I was able to figure out and find out that the color throughout here is purple. So wonderful. Yeah, I, I think I got a good value or a good, a good price. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, happy to have been able to uh, procure this and happy to have been able to build it and talk about it. So um, big thumbs up for me. Uh, big surprise. Very enjoyable. I like it. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and give it a like. If you like my other videos, click the subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date on all the LEGO videos I'll be doing here in the future, including more LEGO Legends of Chima, um, tons of other LEGO sets from all different themes, all different shapes, size, price point, piece count, old sets, new sets, retired sets, used sets occasionally. Um, and uh, so subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the LEGO videos I'll be doing here in the future. We are approaching 1,700 subscribers, which is huge. I can't really believe that. Um, you know, once we hit 1,000, we shot up to uh, 1,500 relatively quickly, and then we stalled for a, a little while, or the growth wasn't as fast as, you know, from 1 to 1 1.5 thousand. And we're on the road to 2,000 subscribers, so uh, I would love to get there by the end of the year, but if not, that's okay. I just really enjoy doing this, and um, you know, stuff like this that surprises me, that I love, is um, one of the, the great benefits. So I really appreciate that, and I'm just very grateful I'm able to share my thoughts uh, with people out there uh, as well. So very, very good. And then if you wanted to support the channel here, please subscribe. Uh, but if you wanted to support it in another way by giving money to the channel, you could do that here on YouTube with membership supers and thanks. I also have a link in the description for buy me a coffee. Uh, there's also a link to the Patreon. Those are all ways to like financially support the channel, which all would help keep the channel going well into the future. It's not needed. It's not necessary. It is extremely helpful though, and it is very, very appreciated. So thank you very much. Maybe consider checking that out. And with all that said, until next time, Thanks. Bye.